Aloha, Richard Halverson here. This is uh, ICS 321. And uh, today is um, March 23rd. And I think we're, in, we're on about our 11th video. This is like the 11th video for the class. <clears throat> and so let's, uh, so let me share my screen. And uh, let's see on the syllabus, I finally added a link to the playlists. Um, they were on the link. There's a link to the playlist on the email on the announcements that go up, but I, I should have one here too. And, and um, uh, to see what the latest video is, the playlist is the best bet to find the latest video because, um, because when I upload the video, then I select the playlist on the first screen, whereas I have to come back when it's all done uploaded and everything. Then I have to come back and add the links here, like this one I just added this morning. But you know, I, I recorded this video back like on the 9th of March or whatever. And same, uh, same here. Uh, they will eventually be listed here, but um, the best place is to look at the playlist, and so you can see. And I'm usually pretty clear. Where is, is this going to get me anywhere? Uh, and I'm pretty descriptive about what's what I cover there. So that's good. Um, all right. And uh, I just want to mention, uh, you know, uh, um, I'm going to help you get through the Zy books, but there's and there's, there's, there's videos for all the other stuff. And uh, you're either gonna find the videos uh, linked to the assignments. If, when you read the assignments, you'll see um, links to, to videos to show you how to do those. And then the links to the, for quizzes, um, you need to go back to, um, let's see, let me look at your version of La Lima. And uh, you can go back to previous semester videos and find uh, solutions to the quizzes if you're having trouble. You know, the idea is that you can you 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 know study the material and do the quizzes, you know, challenged and doing them on your own. But if you really get stuck, you can find the the solutions and if you don't find the solutions just ask me uh, or post it on on the forums i better go check though check these again okay this is my this is my student account so i haven't gone in and read these but my other my other account i have i'm not quite as not up to date anyway uh so so um so i'm gonna start we are starting chapter six today and um, chapter six has to do with transaction management. So let me try to open this up. And um, this is a, a topic that's, that, is, that is unlike the rest of the topics. Uh, there's, we aren't really talking about programming here. We're talking more about operating systems type stuff and um, what kinds of, of database um, um, operations or statements or a, a sequence of data, a sequence of database statements, uh, which make up a transaction that which can make up a transaction. Um, it's about executing transactions concurrently with other transactions. And you know a database system can be isolated where you're the only user, and uh, then it doesn't matter because all your stuff just happens, you know, in sequence. Uh, but if you're on some sort of shared system or a multiprocessor system or um, you know lots of kinds of systems that where there's there's more than one program in the system that's uh, accessing the same database, then you 
uh, you run into operating systems type um, issues like schedules and concurrency and, and all that. So that's what this chapter is about. And it's basically just understanding concepts and knowing what to avoid uh, and when perhaps you should use certain approaches to um, schedules and, and to maintain con uh, concurrency and everything. Okay, so a transaction, let's see what the what this looks like. So so uh, today, I'm probably just going to get through 6.1 and 6.2. And I'm going to uh, sort of um, get down to the point where I'm actually doing some of these participation activities because because they're not that obvious. And so I'll get you started on all of them. And then you, you should be able to um, go through them and finish them. So a transact, let me see what this looks like. A transaction is a sequence of database operations that must be uh, completed or rejected as a whole. Uh, if it's, if when the transaction, if when the sequence of operations is complete, if it looks good, uh, then you commit, in which case you say, okay, I can move on. What's done is it's done and I can, can move on. Or somewhere along the, the line, somewhere along uh, you know, the line executing the sequence of database operations, you may run into a snag, like uh, something's not there, you're moving some money around and oh, this account's empty or some, some such thing like that. And, uh, and so you have to roll back, because you might have started doing some stuff, uh, uh, assuming that you're going to finish, but you're, but you can't for some reason, and then you have to, to, to roll back. Uh, and so your database has to be able to do that because um, you may have have updated some records, you may have created some tables, some accounts, you may have done all kinds of stuff, and all of a sudden you run into a snag, and uh, your the database has to stay consistent. You know you can't just just leave it um, halfway done, um, and that's one of the beauties of databases. I mean, the database enforces all this stuff. So um, here in this chapter, we're going to talk about um, ways to, to do concurrency and, and how you uh, commit and how, how you roll back and so on. So here, um, here's an example of committing and roll, rolling back. It just, okay, so here the, the transaction is Sam Sneed, uh, the famous golfer, is going to uh, take out, take 100 bucks out of one, one account and and um, com and then deposit it in another account, and um, and then he's done, and then and, and then he's going to commit to that. In this example, uh, Sam Snead uh, subtracts subtracts a hundred dollars from account B, and then for some reason, for some reason, decides something is wrong. It's the wrong account or or something, and he and he's not able to. Um, um, uh, complete it. So, so you don't do the second thing, but you have to roll back and add back in the hundred dollars uh, back to account B. Otherwise, you know, otherwise it'll be consistent. Otherwise, Sam Sneed will have lost a hundred dollars someplace, someplace along the way, which of course we can't have. And so, uh, so you can go through this and. Subtracts that, turns into 900, adds it to there, everything's fine, commit. And uh, now this one, uh, subtracts 100, uh, decides not to do that, does a rollback, uh, does not do the third one. Uh, it's starting over. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, um, so it rolled back. Anyway, all right, so there's, there's these four, four uh, properties that, that all transactions must exhibit. And ACID is the uh, acronym to remember what, what they are. Atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable. Okay, that's A C I D, A C I D, and uh, so atomic means that a transaction needs to be atomic. It means it it either has to finish completely 
or it didn't do anything at all, or you know, it was either rejected completely or 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 finished completely. So the database is either going to be in exactly the correct state that that it would be in if the transaction never started or ever never was attempted, uh, or it'll be in the state where the transaction is completed and, and correctly and everything is still consistent. Uh, but it can't ever be in between. So, so you have to make sure that it's atomic. Okay, if it looks like it's not going to be atomic, you got to do the rollback to make sure that when you're done with the rollback, it, it, it's like it never happened. Uh, consistent means that, um, that, that all the rules governing the data are valid. And this has to be, this is like foreign keys. So like if you have a, uh, if, if you're inserting something, some record that depends on, you know, some, if you're, if you're inserting some information about an employee and you have an, and you have an employee number in that, in that record, uh, there better be uh, an employee in the employee table that has that record number. Um, otherwise, uh, okay, so, so that's a rule. So, so you can't do anything that would break any of these rules. And it's, it's those, you know, database rules, but it's also rules like you might have a business rule. Like, um, you know, I like this, the dumb business rule is, which is, which is not a business rule at, at, a, at a university, but uh, is uh, like you, uh, an employee will never uh, make more than uh, his or her boss. Okay. Um, you know, that, that could be a rule. That could be just some dumb business rule, okay? And this small little company has that rule. Well, you can put that into the database. And if anybody ever tries to, you know, there's an employee connected to a boss, to another employee that's a boss, and that the boss has a salary, and the employee has a salary, and someone goes in to try to update the employee's salary, and all of a sudden it, it, it hits, it runs up against this business rule. Um, uh, that that business rule can be programmed into the database, of course, so using a trigger, as we know. Um, and, uh, and that's this consistency term. So the database has, to, so, so when the transaction's over, it's got, it's got to be consistent with all those rules. Um, isolated means uh, as the transaction is taking place, it's not, it's not interfering or being interfered uh, by any other transaction, okay? Uh, and then durable means that that once the transaction is over, it's permanently saved, okay, uh, regardless of system failures, okay. So somehow, you know, it's there's this transaction, and then uh, you know you have some sort of you know super um, um, maybe uh, well uh, that's where something like um, a RAID disk drive or something where, you know, you do this transaction and all of a sudden there's a disk failure. Um, it's the RAID, a RAID disk drive would, would, would be able to recover the data and uh, a, a, a um, system like a RAID is, is important for the databases to, to be able to, be, uh, to uh, maintain this property of durability. So, um, we have uh, two systems. We have a recovery system, which enforces atomic and durable transactions. Um, and that means, uh, that means if something happens midstream, uh, it's able to do what it needs to do to maintain the, uh, the atomicness, the atomacy or whatever the word is of the transaction. It, it, it's, it either looks like the transaction never took place or it looks like the transaction Took place and completed and was and completed uh, successfully, uh, and and durable. And then the, the con concurrency system uh, enforces a concert the uh, um, isolated transactions. Okay, so here's uh, consistent. All right. So uh, so there's um, so there is. These concepts, and let me go back to uh, exit presentation view. Oh, here's here's a nice. Uh, oh, I should I should do these. I should do. This. Okay, 
how many SQL statements must be in one transaction? Well, um, well, it's certainly not exactly one. And there's not really, uh, it's, you, you might think it's at least two because, because if it's not at least two, then we aren't talking about something that's, that would be a, tra a transaction, you know, is concerned with where you have multiple statements and you have to do them all, they all have to be successful and then, then it, it commits. Um, uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. So at least one is the answer to this question, at least one. Okay, um, after a transaction commits, the transaction can be rolled back. No, actually, um, a transaction, once it commits, it means that you're not, that means you've decided you're not gonna roll back. Um, you have to roll back before you commit. So, you know, you make a decision. Uh, you, you may decide to roll back along the way, uh, you know, as you're going, but when you get all the way to the end, you have to make a decision, um, Am I going to commit to this? And if you're not going to commit to it, then you roll back. So, so I'm going to say never. Yes, okay. Um, after a rollback, the database restarts a transaction. Well, it may or it may not. Um, depends on some things. Uh, if it's a... Uh, if it's a if it's an intermittent hard disk error that's not happening hardly at all, um, well, no. How about something like uh, um, trying to access trying to access something over the, or it, it, uh, in the transaction? The transaction requires uh, accessing something over the internet. Let's say I'm just making this up. Uh, and uh, you know that can that can be intermittently uh, so something could be intermittently accessible uh, inaccessible and it's not that big a deal so then then it may you know you may try a rollback or if it's something like the um, the power power supply failed or something then, then it may not but anyway so the answer is sometimes so um, here, this, this, here we just, I just talked about these uh, four properties and this thing. And so he, now here's a nice uh, participation activity. And so here we look and see, uh, we look at these descriptions of incidents uh, and we're supposed to say which, uh, which um, acid property uh, must have been violated. Okay, so a transaction increases all employee salaries by 10%. However, due to a system failure, increases for only half of the employees were written to the database. Well, I guess that would be atomic. Because, uh, you know, the transaction is increase all the salaries by 10%. And it started, but the system failed and it didn't finish. And so, it was not an atomic operation. So what do you do? Uh, I don't know. You should roll back. A transaction saves a row with a foreign key. However, the foreign key and the foreign key is not null. However, it does not match any values in the corresponding private primary key. So, so that's like you have a transaction. You're, you're inputting a transaction about employee Joe Schmo. And uh, it's in in Joe Schmo's employee number is one, two, three. Uh, but then, so you try to insert that in, uh, but then you go over, look in the employee table and there's no, there's no, uh, there's no employee one, two, three. Uh, so Joe Schmo's now, there's no Joe Schmo uh, or possibly Joe Schmo's got a different employee number, right? Employee number. But anyway, so that would be uh, consistent because it's a uh, foreign key. It's a, it's a rule, it's not being, uh, followed uh, two transactions running in parallel reserve the same seat for two different passengers well that's that's isolated These transactions have to be isolated and then um, the last one uh, durable means um, so a transaction withdraws five hundred dollars from the account and deposits 
and deposits that $500 into a different account. Uh, but uh, due to a system disk drive failure, the second one never happened. And the, and the information is permanently lost. Well, that's durable, of course. We can't let that kind of thing happen. And, and a database, you know, is databases are designed uh, to make sure that all these pro these properties are followed. So, um, um, how many ways can can concurrent transact? We're talking about isolation. Talking about isolation. If the concurrency, the concurrency system here enforce, enforces isolate, uh, isolated transactions. Uh, and so these are the three different ways that, um, that can, these are the three different kinds of problems that can happen um, when, when you have concurrent transactions and uh, you, you aren't successful at keeping things completely isolated. So, so these are the things that can happen. You can have what's called a dirty read, where some transaction um, up, updates some data, uh, and then some other transaction comes along and reads the data. But then, uh, but then the first transaction decides to roll back. So, uh, so in other words, this middle transaction, the so so the transaction that read the data ended up reading the wrong data. It read data that was uncommitted and it turns out that it that it was that it was never committed. And so it's a that's a dirty read. A non-repeatable read is when uh, you know the transaction so so it's a case where a transaction might want to read uh, the same data more than once and um, is uh, depending on it being the same. Okay, so, and you know, that can happen. So, you know, a, a, a transaction checks to see if some, if something is possible, it checks to see if the data is okay for, for a, a um, some update. And then, uh, um, and then uh, when it does the update, it does, let's say it does a read write. Um, I can think of a case where this, this happens, um, uh, but let's see, I guess I won't go into that, but um, anyway, so, so what happens is uh, in between the, the read and the original read and, and the reread, uh, X gets updated. So then, you know, it's a, that's called a non-repeatable read. And then a phantom read is when, let's say that the tra a transaction is reading rows of data out of a table and while it's reading the rows of data, some other transaction comes along and inserts a new row into that table, or in fact, maybe deletes a row out of the table. Um, and, uh, and then when, by the time the first transaction is done reading the rows, table rows, the table has changed. So it's a different, so, you know, there, there, there would have been, uh, there, there could have been a phantom read in there. So those are the three different kinds of uh, problems that can occur when, when you're doing uh, concurrent with uh, isolation problems that can, can, can occur when uh, transactions are concurrent. And here's some examples here, uh, a, a dirty read, here's a dirty read. And uh, transaction one upgrades a seat, um, upgrades a seat. Transaction two comes across, comes across, and reads the seed class, issues a ticket, and then for some reason this upgrade seat was uh, could not be completed, and so there's a rollback, and now we have this person over here, transaction two, who's got a ticket uh, on some on some non-existent seat. Okay, so that's a dirty read. So the, the transaction two read the wrong data. A non-repeatable read is where um, uh, one transaction reads uh, uh, data and then when it goes back to reread it, 
it's expecting the data to be the same and it's not it has changed in between the rereads so there's got there's two reads at least and both times are right and uh the transaction the transaction that's doing the double read is expecting the, the values to be the same both times a phantom read is when um one one transaction uh is reading up some records and another transaction is modifying that table in some way and so by the time the transaction that's reading up all the records is done the table has changed in some way and so uh, the transaction does not have an accurate um, um, copy of the table and here here as a participation activity where it gives a sequence and you're supposed to say which kind of uh, conflict type it is. So you can look at that. So this one looks like um, T1 reads salaries of some imp imp accounting department employees, then T2 comes along and does some stuff. And then T1 reads up the remaining accounting employees. Well, that sounds like a uh, um, phantom read because it's reading a bunch of stuff and something happens in the middle. So I'm gonna say that's a phantom read. Uh, increases Sam's salary, reads Sam's salary, rose, rolled back, computes Sam's salary based on the wrong salary. That would be a dirty read. Uh, computes total salary for entire company, increases Sam's salary, commits, computes total salary by department. Uh, okay, so this is two reads. Is this a non-repeatable read? I might be wrong there. Oh, I guess so. Okay. Anyway, and then this is a dirty read. All right, so anyway, um, and then here, this talks about how uh, when you're dealing with external resources, how you just, sometimes you just cannot help uh, violating some of these asset properties. And so you, so you have to figure out ways to, to manage that. Um, so uh, here where, here's where example where, um, you know, uh, a uh, two examples of where the the two the external system is the laptop that's ex that's connected to the airline reservation system, and um, for a for a transaction to be complete, I mean you you need to have uh, everything working. There's two 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 ways that things might not work, and one is. This first example here is where you reserve you reserve a seat, and then the internet fails. So you actually were successful at reserving the seat, but um, uh, but the um, the internet fails. So the user never gets the confirmation message, and you know the transaction commits, and so the user doesn't even know that the seat was reserved. Uh, the second case is where you reserve a seat, send a confirmation message, and then there's a rollback, and uh, you know the user doesn't. It, it, in both in both cases, I guess this second case, the I guess in this case, uh, a a rollback confirmation message is never sent. So anyway, uh, the user thinks uh, you know the the confirmation is an invalid confirmation. And so uh, here, here is helps understanding. Uh, I think these are all of these are false. And here we are. Um, let's see. Can I start this over again? Select the asset property viol violated in each example. So four four transactions run in parallel to reserve the same table from different computers. Well, that would be isolation.
a transaction updates, uh, you know, this so because um, you know each transaction believes it's running in isolation and they're not and it reserves the same table. So one transaction uh, affects the, the, the accuracy or the consistency of, of another transaction, which of course violates the isolated property. Uh, transaction updates all accounts uh, with a balance amount of null to zero. The updates are written to the database, but due to a drive failure, uh, that would be durability, wouldn't it? I think it's durability. Uh, transaction a foreign key. Foreign key does not match. That sounds like consistency. We're talking about integrity, database integrity. And then it, um, however, a system failure caused withdrawals for only half the accounts to be written to the database, uh, that would be atomic. because the transaction is supposed to withdraw $25 from each account. However, it did not. So that's how you do that. The next one is uh, a little bit more difficult here. So here, just describe a set of transactions and we're supposed to say whether um, this, this definition of dirty read, this is conflicts, isolation, isolation conflicts. Okay, so um, T1, what's T1? Well, T1 deletes account A, T1 commits. Is that it? Let's see anything wrong with that, that's good. All right. T2, uh, T2 reads some, oh, oh, I think this is gonna be one of those um, uh, atomic things, right? Non-repeatable, well, phantom read, this is gonna be a phantom read one. Read some accounts, reads remaining accounts. See, so read some accounts, then do -do 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 -do. So, something changed. Oh, reading more accounts. Sounds like some phantom reads could be going on there. Computes the average account size, pays, pays executives 1% of the average account size, commits that. Geez, there could be a phantom read in there. T3, um, does this, does this, does this, nothing in between. It looks pretty good. Uh, that's my guess for those. And what's this one over here? By the way, these are different than the, than the when I did it earlier, uh, they, were di they were different. So this is, uh, it's a good exercise. You can come back and do it again and you'll get a different set of questions. All right, um, T3 adds 50 to account. Oh no, let's do, T let's do T1 first. Reads account, increases. Well, this is, this adds account. And then this rolls back, so that negates this. In the meantime, this thing reads the account, increases it by 10% and commits. Whoa, that's, uh, so that would be reading, uh, be a dirty read, a dirty read, dirty read because of T3. Yeah, because of T3, it made this, read you wrong. Uh, what's T2? Uh, T2 reads, pays, commits, nothing in between, looks good. T, T3, adds 50, rolls back, that's it, that looks good. Let's see. Oh, I got it right. Oh, what do you know? All right. So yours might be different. Oh. All right. Uh, so that's that's uh, section one. Schedules 
has to do with um, how you schedule these operations when when transactions. You know, you have a database system that's do, that's supporting a bunch of users, and they might some of the different users might be accessing the same tables in the same uh, database, and they're doing transactions. And you know, you want things to run along as quickly as smoothly as possible. Um, you might uh, want to schedule these, uh, you know, uh, parts of the transaction, you know, to, to execute in parallel concurrently, but you don't want, um, you know, you, you want to maintain uh, uh, consistency and you, you don't want the schedule to, uh, you don't want a different schedule to end up with a different result. You, you always want uh, whatever the schedule, you, uh, you have to, um, um, it has to be consistent with, with executing each transaction in isolation, not concurrent with any other transaction. And we'll see what that means uh, in this section. Okay, so a transaction schedule is a sequential order of operations for multiple transactions. Operations for different transactions can be interleaved so they can run concurrently. Operations for individual transactions uh, must, must occur in the correct order. So, uh, so within a schedule, two operations in different uh, um, transactions conflict when the relative order of operation affects the outcome. So operations conflict when one operation reads another and you know it reads and another writes the same data. Op relative order of reads and writes affects the outcome. And operations, do, okay, they that's when they do conflict. They do not conflict when both when both are when both transactions are reading the same data, but neither of them is is writing. That doesn't matter. Relative order of two reads does not affect the outcome because. Uh, both times the read, it's reading the same values. The data uh, does not change in between. Equivalent schedules contain the same transactions with all conflicting operations in the same order. Uh, or no, these are equivalent schedules. Conflicting schedules contain the same transaction, but with some, conf with some conflicting operations in a different order. So e equivalent schedules always have the same result and conflicting schedules may uh, have potentially different results. So, um, so here we have a schedule. This this one in the middle here. This is a schedule. Uh, we read x. We do some stuff with with x. Uh, compute a new z. We write the z and we commit. And then a second transaction, we read y. Uh, we we recompute x. We write x and we commit. Okay, so that's a schedule. Here, this one is an equivalent schedule. Uh, it's it's different because we're, we read y before we read x, and in this case we read x before we we read y. So it's different in that way, but still uh, the outcome is the same because once we read x, we do everything we're going to do with x, and we do nothing with y. Transaction y one does not affect y at all. So it doesn't matter when you read y. Uh, no, transaction, uh, transaction one does, a uh, transaction two affects x. And, uh, and if we want the, the equivalent schedule to be the same as the, as the original schedule, we have to make sure that the order of X being written with respect to X being read is in the same order as the as the original schedule. So uh, T1 reads X first, and then T2 writes X second. And that's the same in both schedules. T1 reads X first, and T2 writes X second. Now in this conflicting schedule, it's, it's, it's conflicting because uh, T1, uh, T2 writes X before T1 reads it. Now that's the opposite, see? So that's gonna be messed up. That's gonna be different. That's the point here. And this thing, um, uh, this, 
test your understanding of that. Let's see, refer to the schedules in the above animation. These schedules up here, use these initial values for each question. After schedule, after schedule executes, oh, this one, this one, schedule. Okay, after schedule executes, what's the value of Z? Well, let's see. I want to know what this value is. Oh, that's easy. Uh, what's X? X is nine. And uh, X divided by three is, is three. So Z must equal three. So Z must equal, is there another? That's it. So Z must equal three. Yes. After equivalent, after equivalent schedule, that'd be this one. What is the value of Z? Well, it should be the same. After conflicting schedule, what's the value of Z? Well, now it's different. So we read um, Y. So now Y matters. We read Y, X equals Y plus two. So uh, Y is four, yeah? So X now equals six, and we write six. And so now this is six instead of nine. And six divided by three is two. So Z is equal to two. Two, two. So anyway, you can finish that. Schedules and concurrency. A serial schedule is a schedule in which functions are executed one at a time, transactions are executed one at a time. Serial schedules have no concurrent transactions. Every transaction begins, executes, commits or rolls back before the next transaction begins. All transactions in a serial schedule are isolated, perfectly isolated. So um, any schedule that is equivalent to a serial schedule is a serializable schedule. A serializable schedule can be transformed into a serial schedule by switching the relative order of reads in the different transactions. The order of all operations within a single transaction uh, and reads and writes in different transactions cannot be changed. The, the order of all operations within a single transaction and the reads and writes in a different transaction cannot, cannot be changed. And so that's more or less what I was explaining up here about the um, certain orders, certain order of reads and writes have to be the same. So here um, we have a serial schedule and see transaction one does everything that it's basically what is up here, this one. And uh, a serializable schedule is, um, well, we are, we are reading, um, y and then we're doing some x stuff you know we're doing transaction one we, we, we read y uh, then we do some stuff over here and that doesn't affect the that doesn't affect what we've done over here reading y uh, so, you know basically this this schedule is the same as this schedule uh, and so because you can you know you can put this down here and it's not going to affect anything you can put the Z up here and it's not, this does not affect the Z at all. And um, this does not affect the Y at all. So, uh, so you can see that, that this is the same as this and you can see that it's serializable because you can put that down here, you can put that up there, you can put these two up here and anyway, you can make it like this. Match the type match the schedule type to the example schedule. So, um, so here's the example schedule. Well, that's serializable. See, it's totally serializable, it's serialized. Uh, and then we have um, reading X, writing X, Uh, 
Um, this one would not be serializable because because uh, if you want, if you really want this to be the outcome, this x is going to be dependent on this x. This x is going to be dependent on this x, and then when when this thing writes x, it's going to overwrite this x. So it's like this never happened. So this is the non-serializable schedule. And this would be the serial. This is, this is serializable and this is serial. I wasn't paying attention. This is the serial schedule, obviously. And this, this is the serializable schedule because you can make this one like this one. All right, so anyway, uh, okay, isolation levels. Um, Relational databases allow um, so so if it's serializable, then um, then you know you're fine and you aren't dealing with any sort of concurrency at all. Run serializable schedule with concurrent with concurrent. Well, serializable transactions run in a serializable schedule with concurrent transactions. Isolation is guaranteed. Um, now, repeatable read transactions uh, read only committed data. So, so these are ways of relaxing the rules to speed up, you know, so you can speed things up. Uh, but you run the risk, you still run some risks. You see in this with the repeatable read and you can read this more closely and convince, convince, us, convince yourself that of, 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 of this here, that um, when you do a, a repeatable read, transactions, uh, transactions will read only committed data. After the transaction reads the data, other transactions cannot, cannot update the data. Uh, so uh, a repeatable read prevents most types of iso isolation uh, violations, but it does allow phantom reads. Phantom reads are a tough one. Okay, and so read committed uh, allows non-repeatable and phantom reads. And read uncommitted can allow transactions read uncommitted data, read un uh, read uncommitted processes, processes uh, and current transactions efficiently, but allow a broad range of you know, violation errors and so on. Uh, and uh, schedules, uh, serializable schedules affect concurrency, uh, which supports isolated transactions. Three additional schedule types affect, affect the recovery system, which supports uh, you know, the recovery system is what uh, supports transactions, you know, being atomic and durable. A non-recoverable you know, non schedule, uh, in a non-recoverable schedule, one or more transactions uh, cannot be rolled back. In a cascading schedule, rollback of one transaction forces the rollback of other transactions and uh, in a strict schedule, a rollback of one transaction never forces the rollback of another. So, so he, here we're here, you know, this is an example of where, you know, you're allowing, you write something, you read it, you have a rollback. Okay. You know, you allow that, but, but if there's a rollback, then, then this one has to roll back also. So this, so this rollback causes this rollback basically uh, because this was allowed because you were allowed to read in between the right and the little back here. Um, here, you know, you, you can't. Non-recoverable, you know, here, here you're, um, you, you read and you commit and, you know, you can't roll back after you commit. So you read, you commit, and then over here, you try to roll back and you can't do it. You shouldn't do it. 
So this tests your understanding of that. Transaction A writes data and rolls back before transaction B reads the data. Well, that's strict. Transaction A writes the data, transaction B reads and commits. Oh, well, that would not be recoverable, me thinks. Okay, here's, here's a nice challenge activity. And we're at the end here, so let's try to do, do these. Um, <clears throat> enter the value of Z after each schedule executes. Initial values are, okay, these don't look too difficult. Let's, oh, it's just, there's just one of them. Okay, well, let's, um, All right, I'm gonna try this. <clears throat> Enter the value for Z after each schedule executes. Initial values are this, okay? So, uh, okay, so we read. <clears throat> okay, so let's try to do this. We read. We read y, so y, and where do we, oh, z, here z is affected. So we just need to do the value of z. So we read x and z equals, um, equals uh, x times two. So x is four, and four times two is eight, so z is eight. So I'm gonna put eight here. Okay, that's eight. The next one we're supposed to figure out what Z is um, right up here. So it's X four times two is eight. Reading X, reading X, computing Z. I'm reading X and computing Z. Okay, so that's the same thing, eight. And in this one, I'm uh, reading y, which is two. Two plus four is six, so x is six. Writing six, reading six. Okay, I'm not reading four anymore, I'm reading six. Six times two is 12, c is 12. Okay, now uh, A and B are equivalent schedules. Um, A and C are conflicting and B and C are conflicting. That's what I think. Check. Oh, all right. Well, anyway, it is uh, 328 and uh, today I covered um, chapter six sections one and two on transaction management and um, we'll cover the rest of the of these of this chapter next time I am I have scheduled another class for this week uh, so I will see you again on I'll, the next video is scheduled to be recorded this Friday at uh, 1130. So thanks for watching.